we do have the SDR control for the iPhone, for the iPad, and for our Mac. And there are slight differences in between. Uh, this one here is the iPhone. However, I'm using this on the iPad. So it has the iPhone uh, screen. I increased its length. This is probably what you would see on your iPhone right now. It works. There are uh, settings, a couple of quirks I notice once in a while, but nothing to um, affect the operation. You can increase the volume. You can have the radio volume on at the same time by just turning that on. And then in settings, you have lots of options here. And then there you go. Now I go to memories. Actually, I've created a program uh, to program the memories to be able to redo it with a click of a button when I want to make changes. And of course, you have the usual tools here. Memory scanning, call lookup, network, logbook. Uh, one thing about the logbook, if you have if you plan to use an iPad, iPhone, and your, your Mac off and on at various different times, uh, you definitely want to set it up so that you're using iCloud. If you don't, then you're going to have a separate file for all your uh, logging, which can be a nuisance when you're <laughs> wanting to look up something. So be sure to uh, turn on the uh, logbook iCloud. Okay, and let's go back to modes, FD8, D star, and CW. And you have memories that you can change your groups. Okay, here's, uh, for some reason, this doesn't get updated. These are some of the little quirks I was telling you about. Okay. Hit the push to talk. Testing, one, two. Okay. I'm transmitting on my ICOM 705 low power and I have my handheld uh, TID radio H3 uh, uh, feedback that you're hearing just to show that it works. Squelch, and there's your waterfall. And you can lock the frequency. Okay. And this is being updated uh, just recently. Previously, I was able to view both. And no, nope, it's no longer available. Okay. A logbook. Now, let me show you the iPad Mac version. One thing I noticed um, when you're switching from one app to the other app immediately after quitting, there seems to be a delay in the communication. Okay. This app is actually a Mac version, but it's running on uh, the iPad. It's reducing the waterfall. Use the pencil. 
Okay. Testing, one, two, three. Okay. Okay. Still using the same device, an iPad. It is kind of like the Mac laptop app I have, except the layout was a little bit different. And if I want to transmit, there's one option right there. Testing. One, two, three. Okay. You're just hearing it through my ICOM 705 and my TID Radio H3. A bit of feedback. I'm running low power. Adjust your power here. There you go. Let's put it up to a hundred right now. Okay, my SWR is one point five. There you go. Testing one two. Yeah. Watts, and you have options for attenuators. RF gain is 100, preamp off. My filter options, I have more. Okay, noise blank, and I'm on the 70 centimeter band. more usable using the iPad than the iPhone. However, with the iPhone, it's, it's great when you're doing antenna work uh, and you're away from your radio and you want to transmit. You always have your iPhone, so it's, uh, it's quite handy. And you have, of course, all the tone options. And I can switch. this too often the layout is different from what I'm used to on my Mac so I have to kind of remember and relearn it so it would be nice if it, if it was more consistent in the same place I know there's a limitation but I think on the iPad they should be able to do that Okay, and this is the usual options, FD8. I have the memories. All the usual settings. Okay. Let's compare the iPhone, the iPad, to the MacBook version, which I'm going to be running on a MacBook Pro with the M1. This is the MacBook Pro version or the Mac version. Very similar screen as you saw on the iPad, except uh, I have a larger screen, which means I could open other windows on the same screen. Uh, if I want, for example, FT8, I have it right there. 
if I want memory, I can go there. And of course, you do have the globe and, and maps, stuff like that, so you know where the stations you're hearing. I have this little panel for memory. It allows me to switch frequencies quickly. You need to enable your device speaker. And what the output devices are. Your mic threshold, I find if you have it too high up, you'll be able to transmit, but your audio won't go through. So it's quite critical, apparently. Okay, switching difference. Okay, I can turn off the mic. Testing, one, two, three, four, five. I'm doing the same thing. My, I'm running low power, and my TID radio H3 is giving me some feedback. You have various settings. I would think some of this could be put together in one window. Macros. There's the usual. Features. And this is the memory panel that I'm using. It's off right now. If I'm operating uh, VHF, UHF, I find this is handy. your windows, the usual help. And of course, if I hit this, let's see, I'm not sure if I have and then on the right antenna. Turn down the volume so you can operate uh, quietly and not disturb anyone else. There you go. For FT8, I usually use my ICOM 7300, which let me do that right now. Usually takes uh, 15 to 30 seconds before you get a list here. Initially, when you start up, all depends on your timing. Uh, no one's calling CQ at this very moment. One thing with the ICOM 7300 has a tuner, and that's the alert I get when I'm connected. I don't run. No anywhere between uh, 10 to 30 watts all depends on the band conditions I could push it further like to 100 but I find it's um, more skillful when you're running uh, low power as I was saying it'd be nice if the interface 
as similar as much as possible. I know screen size is going to stop a lot of that, but perhaps uh, creating uh, one window with uh, tabs or something of that sort makes it a clean operation. I find when I go to the iPhone, I'm, okay, uh, push to talk is great. I go to the iPad, oh, where's the push to talk? Oh, I gotta open a, a window two to do it, or actually go in the corner and hit the push to talk. It's it's that type of interface I find uh, a little bit irritating when I'm going from one app to another. If you're only using one app, yeah, you can learn. It, it works great. The only time I would use the iPhone app is when I'm in a different area. Yeah, that's where I figured he was uh, connected to someone else. Otherwise, it works great. I know iCom has one, but they only have it available for Windows. And you know, I may have a, the original version that I paid for on CD. I noticed I, I discovered it. Maybe later on I will give it a try and hopefully it's good enough to get updated. But I prefer to use my Mac <laughs> because I could be doing other things in the background while this is going on. So this is, uh, I mean, there's lots more details I can go in. But I don't think it's uh, important. I think it's just a general operation that uh, most people want to know. And if there's something you want to know if this could do this or if it can do that or not, just leave a comment in the text. I'm going to try to make this video as short as possible, so I'll be cutting out a lot of uh, dead air. It would appreciate it if you subscribe and thumbs up, especially if you find it uh, uh, useful. And feel free to ask questions in the comments there. Your comments will not get posted right away. They will be just reserved for me. And when I look at it, I answer it and have it available uh, for you to view and uh, and also to others that uh, may have similar questions. Take care. Have a nice day.